book of Acts now, Global School and Global Church. We're glad you're here with us today as we're continuing our study in the Hebrew alphabet. We're starting now at the top of the alphabet, which is the letter Aleph. And uh, several meanings, the word picture is ox, but it means the first, the strong one, the father, the leader of the house. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the biblical words that use Aleph. Okay, so the first is father, and it's made up of two letters. The Aleph looks like an X, doesn't it? This is the Aleph, and this is the, uh, the valve, the A, and um, this is Bet, the second letter of the alphabet. And you'll notice, if there's a dot here, it has the B boy sound. If there's no dot, it has the V victory sound. So uh, sometimes you hear uh, the translation Abba, Abba Father. But in this instance, Father is Av because there's no dot. So it's A-V. Uh, Aleph itself does not have a sound. You notice that? Only if it has a vowel. God chooses to identify himself and the earth with man uh, or with his son. So there's a revelation of the Father. And so the Father has... Cho uh, has chosen something to reveal itself, in this case, a valve. So we have A V. That's how you pronounce that. Av. Okay, what does it mean? The strength of the house. That's who the Father is. He's the strength of the house. Amen? Okay, so this is a very important word, the word love. And I want to spend a few minutes on this because we have all kinds of false ideas about what is love. You know, oh, it's a feeling. If you just only loved me. <laughs> or he doesn't really love me. You know, we, we make it, this is the Greek mindset. We make it all about our feelings. But in the Hebrew mindset, it's not about feeling. Love is a principle that you act on. Which is why Christ said, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your enemies. He wasn't saying feel good about your enemy. What he was saying is, you treat your enemy um, with love by how you act towards them. Bless those who persecute you. Pray for those who misuse you. That's how you're demonstrating love. It's an action. You follow? So now let's take a look at the letters that make up the word love and see what it's all about. Remember, Aleph has no sound of its own. So it takes the A sound here, the valve. So we have A. Uh, and here we have, the hay is in the middle of the word. Remember this principle. If hay is in the middle of the word, it means heart, God's heart. And then we have the V sound here because there's no dot. This is bet, if it has the dot. Um, and so it, it pronounced this way. Ah, ha, ahav, or hava. So what, it, what does it really mean? Well, it means this. The Father's heart and the house is lifted up or declared. And so here's the meaning. God is all about covenant. And if you're in covenant with God and you're drawing near to his heart, near to him, and he's lifted up, everybody in the house will be lifted up. This is what Christ meant. That's a Hebrew concept. When Christ said, if the Son of Man be lifted up, he's able to draw all men into him. So you want to have oneness in your household with your children. Oneness in your household with your spouse and with those who are in your house. You draw near to covenant with God. And as you draw near to him, everybody else in the house is drawn to him. This is the true concept of what love is about. It's about covenant and it's about actions of principle to where you're seeking God first his kingdom, his righteousness, and everything else is added to you, which is what Christ taught. Amen? So we need to get rid of the Greek mindset that, that says it's, it's about feeling and, and uh, eros. It's, it's about sensuality and all of that. No, that's not love. Okay, Lord. I, I like this. So L-O-R-D in the King James Bible, all of God's names are translated L-O-R-D. That's unfortunate because... He has more than one name. Yod Hey Vav Hey. Amen. Uh, we, you know, El Shaddai. And the common term in Hebrew for uh, for God is Adonai, 
which was their way of saying Lord, right? So here's how you spell that. So you have the Aleph here with the A. This is the D. This is the Dalit. Uh, this is the o Vav, but with the dot, it makes the O sound. This is the N for life. And this is He or declare. So what does it mean? Adonai. Adonai. What does it mean? The Father at the door. Come on now. The Father at the door with the nail is declaring life to you. Amen. That's what God's name means. You see, the Old Testament is looking to Calvary, right? And the New Testament is looking back to Calvary. But it's all about the sacrifice of the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. And so, the same true with yod heh vav -Heh. It, it actually has to do with the nail. So the common term in Hebrew for Lord actually means the father's at the door with a nail trying to declare life to you. What did Paul mean when he said, I'm crucified with him daily? It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The nail came to visit him and he became a new man. Hallelujah. Has the nail been to your house? Because that's what God wants to declare. And that's what his name means. Wow. Great revelation. The gospel is in Hebrew. It's in the Old Testament. It's in the New Testament. You know, people get uh, kind of off focus when they say, well, no, the gospel's only the New Testament. No, listen. Do you understand when Paul was preaching, they didn't have a New Testament. He was using the Old Testament scriptures and declaring Calvary and the life of Christ. Okay, so uh, the word mother is made up of two important letters. We have Aleph here. We have the E. The double dot here is the E. And then we have the Mem, uh, which means chaos or water, massive water. So the word mother means strong water. Well, where do we get that from? We get it from this. When a woman's getting ready to have a baby, what happens to her water? Her water breaks. It brings forth life. And so they use that to describe the mother. That's the, that's the person with the strong water that breaks and brings forth life. But now watch this. If you want to go from mother to truth, you take the word mother and add the tav at the end of it. Now why would that be? Because the mother was the one who, trot, who taught covenant to her children. She was the one who would sit them down and tell them the stories from the Torah, from the Old Testament. David and Goliath, you know, and, and uh, Jonah and the well. All of the stories having to do with covenant were taught by Mama. So Mama was responsible to make sure that the children grew up knowing the ways of the Lord. Amen. And so that's why truth is defined by a mother who is lifting up covenant. Amen. That's what this means. The mother who has covenant that's being lifted up. And that's how you know what truth looks like. So, let me ask you this. Fathers certainly are an important influence on the child in the home. They lead by example. But if the mothers throughout the homes in America were lifting up covenant and teaching covenant and making sure when she tucked in the little ones that she's praying with the kiddos and she's Talking to them about the Lord, I'm telling you, they'll grow up wanting to know Him and with a sense of direction in their life. You know, I remember uh, a year or two back, we had foster children. And these kids came to us with hardly no values. Some of them had never used a toothbrush. They didn't know how to maintain hygiene. They didn't know how to make a bed. Some of them had never slept in a bed. I mean, this is the kind of thing when, you know, when you're getting foster kids. And I remember Margie taking these kids in hand. And she would teach them, literally, this is how you brush your teeth. So many times up and down on this side, this side. Here's how you wash. You take the wash rag. You go five times here, five times here, five times here. It was like step by step by step. And the kids learned. I mean, kids learned quickly, but they needed to have somebody teach them the basics of hygiene, the basics of, of what it means to take care of your body. And the same thing is true spiritually. We tuck the kids in at night, we'd have a prayer. And when we prayed at the dinner table, it was a memorized prayer. 
Lord Yeshua, thank you for this food and bless this food. In Yeshua's name, amen. And that was their prayer. And, you know, kids are really great at remembering, uh, remembering things. If you change it once you said it, they're like, uh-uh, uh-uh, no, 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 you left that out. <laughs> or if one of the kids would mess up and forget, you know, we'd, we'd have Albert or somebody say, um, Lorenzo, Mama Margie, Albert didn't pray. <laughs> because kids have a way internalizing the values that we teach them. And so this needs to really happen in every home where kids learn how to pray. They learn how to take care of themselves. They learn hygiene. They internalize um, standards, you know, of what's right, and what's wrong. They learn all that from the parents. They, I'm sorry, they don't learn that from Sesame Street. They learn that from mom and dad or the role model in the home Amen. that's teaching them what to know. And so this whole thing of allowing the TV to be the parent for your kid because you're busy, it doesn't work. It really needs to come from the parents in the home. And so, again, we have the father who is the strength of the house. He is the role model in the house. Let me tell you something about dads. <clears throat> I remember reading this some time back. If the mother goes to church, 17% of the kids will wind up going to church. If father regularly gets up and reads his Bible and goes to church, like 83% of the kids will go to church. Now, why is that? Because typically in the home, the father is not the emotional one that's, you know, crying and weeping and praising God. And, you know, they're like, oh, I'm going to read my Bible. You know, and, and so they're like, you're like John Wayne, right? So, look, dads, to have an influence in your home, you don't have to be Mr. Spiritual. All you have to do is say, I'm reading my Bible every day. This is what I read. I'm, I'm, you lead by example. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to church. Your kids will get up and follow you. And this is missing in the home. Because for some reason, the devil has taught men that uh, it's not a manly thing to cherish a relationship with Christ and wanting to go to church. But it is a manly thing. Come on, now think about David. Amen. Took out the giant, you know, with one smooth stone. That's one of the most manly things that you read in the Bible. Think about Daniel facing down the lion saying, I'm not turning my back on God. I'm standing all the way, man. Listen, you want to be a man, stand up for God. Amen. How about the three Hebrews that, that uh, they wouldn't bow down and worship that image statue. And so they were thrown in the fiery furnace and they didn't die. But the guys that threw them in, they died. And the king is standing there saying, whoa, we, didn't we throw three people in there? There's a fourth guy in there, and he looks like the son of God. And the only thing that burned them was the rope that bound them. Amen. Those are men. You, stand, you don't compromise. You stand up for what's right. You stand up for God. And you don't just go along with the boys because they want to go have uh, whatever. You stand up for truth and what's right. And guess what? You won't have to preach a sermon. The people in your life will look at you and say, now that is a man of God. That is how you're supposed to live. You don't, you know, the greatest sermons are not are necessarily spoken. The greatest sermons are simply lived to where people can see them. Somebody say amen. amen. The word love, the father's house, heart in the house is lifted up. So everybody else is lifted up. Come on, men. It's time to lift up the heart of God where you live in your house. Amen. And Adonai, the father at the door with a nail, is declaring life. Well, let's close today as we uh, reflect on the letter Aleph and what it means in the Bible. This is the first letter. And let me give you this encouragement. 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. The first one is Aleph, and the last one is Tav, which you see down here. And you know what it means? Tav means covenant. If you follow after the Father, like the ox, he will plow up your ground, and he will always lead you to covenant. Amen. Aleph Tav. Father, thank you for blessing us today in our study as we apply this for this week, that we will be men and women of truth, Amen. 
men and women of character and principle who stand up for what's right and lead the way and set an example for this generation and for our children, we pray in Yeshua's name. Amen.